quicker. If he had part of the equipment, he has two 30 yard scrapers. And uh, he can start right away if needed. Um, I've got a, I'm going to do a press for time, but I have got a, kind of a, uh, I got a draft blueprint here. I'd like to go over a few things with you on the concern is, is that the bids usually, usually when you have bids are a little closer than this. Uh, Does he have everything? Are you, like you saying, like apples to apples? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's what Darren said. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them have for work, you know. All of the. Uh, some of them have for work, you know. Yeah, well, I understand that, but man, that's a lot of difference. Yeah. Each, con good each contractor got one of these drafts, okay. and on the draft, um, I explained to each one of them what had to be done. You know, there, there will be, and the other standards going to be a CQA, which is Construction Quality Assurance. Um, we will have sur um, an engineer survey on site, off and on, to make sure that the pit is being dug correctly to KDHE specs which is, okay, this is our new cell right here. And what you see, these dark lines right here, this is a two-to-one slope on the sidewalls, which, I, you know, like I said before, I mean, that takes up 11,000 cubic yards of space, but uh, they're required and we do that. But I'm going to start filling on this end of this pit first. And as I take the waste down this ramp, I will go to this corner. And once it starts building up, then I can dig this two to one slope out and replace it. I can do that all throughout the pit to gain more room, but you can't remove that two to one slope for soils or whatever until you get waste to replace it. And this is a. But you can do that yourself with yes. your equipment. Yes. This is a pretty long, steep ramp. I mean, not steep, but it's long. Um, that ramp will be put in place. I mean, once the, when they go to digging this, they got to be able to get in and out. And as they go through. This was going to be a six to one slope, which is a long ramp. Not very steep, but yet when I get trucks or uh, housing demolition and they've got a 30 yard roll up, they'll be able to back that truck all the way down in here to dump their waste. Um, that's kind of the way we design a bit. And smaller vehicles I'll let them dump up here, I'll make a working face and I can just carry it, I'll pick up clothes at a time down this ramp. And eventually once I start filling across this way, I will remove this ramp also. Oh, you know, I'd love to be careful. Yeah. I'll fill from the west to east. It's not to lose any space, it's just that you can't do it right now. So it's just yeah. On the sides. That's not such a bad thing. Yeah, and there's notation on the draft that each contractor got that swung us to the other day. Okay, as you can see right here, this is the cell that I'm in now which is full, I'm not above grade, but I'm actually full of the, you know, what's allowed for proper cover. But um, some of the sand that's coming out of this pit will be stockpiled right here. That's one of the helpful deals on, on the cost is they don't have to go far or have to move the dirt. It'll be stockpiled on top of this pit and finish filling this one for cover. So a third of the sand, I mean, once you get down a third or two thirds of the way, there's you get a clay base, and that will be stockpiled on the old C and D, our very first C and D pit. That's going to be stockpiled here, and this uh, more concentration of clay soil will be used as a final cap, which they require. You get eight, the right to to 18 that. inches of clay on top, and then a permeable topsoil on top of that. Big scrapers will be able to run on top here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see they'll be dumping stuff on top of it. I mean, there's no other way to. Do it. But uh, see, this this draft has got to, before we can ever turn any dirt, this draft has to be um, submitted to KDHE and approved. But uh, and you've done that, right? No, they have not done that. I mean, before we can ever start digging, KDHE right. has to approve it. Which, I mean, so the, we can, we the pit width, depth, and everything, we, we, <laughs> what we got bids on, that will not change. The bids will, if they have it changes, not to me or what? No, yeah, the bids won't change. By not going through a program yet. I mean the 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 dimensions and depth and everything of the pit has been approved. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Have you had this been submitted to KDHE yet? 
That's, no, they're supposed to get that into them this week. Well, I'm just thinking with fuel costs. I mean, could this yeah, that's change? Yeah, change if they're not. That's what yeah, I'm that's what If it's a month from now, yeah, the fuel these, could go. These bids, when I talk to each contractor, these bids are valid for 90 days. Okay. All right. This, yeah. All right. So these bids are current. And yes, they're current, valid for 90 days. Okay. So you've got 90 days to get that approved. And Yes, okay. and they're supposed to. Uh, I talked to Terracon Friday. And they're supposed to be getting this in this week to KDE. Oh, okay. And they don't see any problems with it. No, that's what well, engineer did. She put it on the agency to do it, but sure. <laughs> okay, well, we had a bid. What? Stones have fifty nine eight oh five. Dakota Dirt is sixty seven two eighty two, and Ensfield Construction is thirty nine two seventy. It's like. Not much question for you, but I is that right? Yeah. Well, the easiest decision. Uh, I'll make a motion. We You'll see on the on the bids, each of those are uh, putting in their figure for silt fence. Yeah. The silt fence is anywhere we disturb soil. You have to have silt fence. And silt fence has to be put around stock pockets to prevent erosion. Okay, I still like erosion. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and second. We accept the bill for an scale for uh, 30, 39270. Oh. With defense. With defense, sorry. 39270. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. All right. Okay. Is that what you want to Doors. Okay. I second. I second. Maybe 10. I think we'll take a little longer. Yeah. No, that's fine. No, no let's, let's do it. 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 let us do it with a vision screener. It was supposed to take the place of the old eye chart. I want to talk to you about paying for that. I want to go through my budget. So they got matching funds. So Brooke, keep going. Hey, Ray, all that money was left. It's just a real life fund. Stafford came over and said, you know, it's the whole thing. Countywide. Bert's the guy that wants to do it. So, so I'm going to go ahead and get it ordered. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Okay, you talk about your name. Well, I'm glad you did it. Well, this is what here. Go, go through the oh, okay. yeah. Don't talk to it. It's going to go through um, yeah, that's, that's the spread bids. I guess that's what competition we do. Uh, second thing is we had a WIC audit on Friday that kind of capped out the week. Uh, we did very well. She couldn't find any. Nothing, nothing. The only thing she complained about was the way we were doing the formula log, and I said, I've been doing that for 15 years <laughs> that way, and you haven't said anything before. That's why I find something. Just so, uh, yeah, yeah, they had the health fair come. 325. Wow. Is that? 304 last year. Yeah. But we did end up going to Maxville on Wednesday because the school requested it. We did 25 at school, so if we hadn't gone there, we'd have to so it was early mornings and late night last week. We also did 193 school physicals Wednesday night. Well, I don't know. Last week. All right. So right. nothing to do this week. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Tell the rules. Yeah. So, good morning, guys. Rule, I'm sorry for the delay. No problem. Uh, the first part we probably better be in the late session. Oh, well, 10 minutes on the road. I know we're going to executive session for 10 minutes for well, my personnel. I don't know what yours is. No, I like it. I second it. 
Okay, with that moved and second, we go into a 10 minute executive session for non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. We're in the executive session for 10 minutes. Okay, the okay. paper I got from the CPA on the hospital, this is statistical comparison. And you've got current ratio, you've got ratios and margins. And if you go to item two, it says days cash on hand, and to the right, it'll tell you desired trends for hospitals. And the CPA firm only does hospitals. So that pretty well give you trends there. You've got the ones that he, dot, he highlighted was number two, which was days cash on hand, four operating margins. Six total margins, excluding contributions. That would be where the tax funds are coming from. Uh, eight days revenue and accounts receivable. And that one is down a lot. They've worked hard to get that down. And 14 is labor ratio. Then on the second page, you got patient days acute and patient days swing bed. And if you look back in 08, when it was a district hospital, you'll find that all those, the acute and the swing bed were way low. And then after Dr. Bauer came, they picked up. And that would correspond to that. That would be the change that's happened in that period of time. Is there any questions on that? Even though it's picked up, it doesn't help the bottom line much. That's what's frustrating. That is. It, uh, basically, I think there's going to be a lot of analyzing of... Uh, there's a point of what will work and what won't work. You know, if something doesn't work, it may have to be adjusted. You know, it doesn't be good to sell 500 pencils if each pencil doesn't make something. Reimbursement is what 101 101 percent of cost of cost. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we had if we could get more patients with commercial insurance, very much and, right, then the profit the margin would be greater than what. And what are we we're looking at? Probably 95 percent of the. Patients in the hospital or, or Medicaid yes. or Medicare. I in mean, our county, that's exactly yeah. right. And you're right. You get 101 of cost, which yeah. means there's no way of making any money. Huh. Not like that. We need, we need families to go there with insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know your uh, lab, your your outpatient services. Those. You can make some money. Yeah. Make some money right? And rural health clinic is a good deal. Yeah, yeah. we just got that in the last six months. That's great. And uh, that's a good deal. That's a, there's some steps in the right direction. It's just uh, baby steps. I'm so sure lucky to have those. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Bauer, okay? Are you happy? Seems fine. Good. Um, Dr. Bauer's getting older, as we all are. Yeah, so that's going to be another contingent plan down the road is mm -hmm. finding somebody when he retired. Because he's not talking about that in the immediate future. No, it's not in the immediate future. Not at all. Good. Very good. Thank you much, Ron. Thank you. Hope to see you very soon. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. guys that um, Joe Sheepack met with me about the tax sale and so um, we only from what we started with a year ago there was only 12 parcels left all of them had been paid but I can't I, we're kind of basically just starting over because another year has went by and that made more parcels eligible so um, 
we added 40 more parcels. So we're, he's going to go ahead and add those in. And so I was pleased that he came and got with me and worked Thank you've had one this year yet. I, he didn't indicate if it would be no. this year or not, but at least we're starting to work on it again in positive direction on that. So. so these are the ones that are three years? Yes. Three years in arrears? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Redemption years, which is really right. almost four tax years. So, so I wanted to report that to you. Are you going to be around this morning? More this afternoon than this morning. Um, can you hold on for Steve? How much? What do you have? Um, I probably have about 25 minutes. Okay. So, um, right. but I'll be there right. this afternoon. All right. Okay. Don't get a ticket. <laughs> I believe you all got a letter, and I was just going to kind of give you some from. Uh, in reference to an ambulance bill. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, I, I, I wanted to give this a little bit of feedback on that, um, a little bit of explanation. Um, I, I told Missy that if, you know, if, if the hospital could, could just let us know if, I mean, the, the issue is, is that the ambulance service didn't do anything. Wrong. Okay, but we just we just transported they, the patient. Transported the wrong place. Yeah, but that's what we were directed to do. And so, I, I, but I, I believe what happened, and, and I think it's a little bit more complex than than maybe even what the, the letter under, uh, explains. But that's not really my my responsibility to delve into you know doctors' issues, and so I'll, I'm not going there <laughs> uh, because I'm back in the judge. You know what the doctor did or didn't do, or, because I, I just don't know. I don't know all the factors surrounding it. It's, it's but it can get rather complex. You know, medical treatment can get very complex, and you know whether another doctor wants something additional because of the patient's condition, and, and then they, they they balk at doing a procedure that possibly could have been done. That happens. And uh, but I just wanted to explain that you know I don't have the authority to, and that was what was. Uh, Relayed on uh, to Mrs. Moody from Misty was we don't have the authority to just uh, dissolve the bill. I don't have that authority, and so uh, we we haven't done that. Well, I yeah. think it must be like if, if the hospital, you know, if they didn't, if the doctor didn't take enough time to find you know patient information and went ahead and transport somewhere else, the hospital should be one responsible for the bill. Uh, that's what I would think. That's what I think, that's I think the about. connection there might, might be the misunderstanding, the connection of county hospital, county, county, county. That the connection may be, maybe there's a misunderstanding on how tight that connection is and that it's, it's just county and so county should take care of it. Whereas you, you guys don't have the authority to, to tell the hospital to dissolve the bill either. So you know, you're kind of, it's, it's over there. They're the ones that, 
that can make that happen. And so that's I don't think I don't think this part is their responsibility. They did that's a grown on their end. It's just on the other the safety of the hospital it wasn't. If, if, there, if there was it something that was wrong, it was, it was at the hospital. Right? And I, you know, but so I think as far as that's but as far as your, I mean, it, it, it ultimately it's up to. You, I mean, I, I guess you still can decide, you know, to do whatever you want to do with a bill. But why wasn't her bill covered by Medicare? Can you mm -hmm. transport one time, and they did transfer. If they transferred where that she could have, they could have had help. It wouldn't have been charged if they didn't transport it. I think there's a communication. But, but again, I'm, I'm speculating. Okay, I'll jump outside the box and speculate. I'm going to speculate that, that the patient possibly was transferred over there, and because of the condition, maybe they, they didn't feel comfortable doing the procedure, whereas maybe Dr. Bauer thought that, that he did, you know, he's, not a, he's not a surgeon, so maybe he doesn't understand that, that the patient isn't going to be able to be treated over there because of the condition is such that... Um, they want some other specialists there before they do a surgery. Yeah. It's actually I'm relatively guessing. common, right? I mean, you, somebody has well, a, if a you, condition, maybe it's a heart, and they go to the hospital, oh, we don't, we can't yeah, take care sure. of that here, so then you go to the next place that can take care of you. I mean, that's not unusual. Small rule in America, you, you're probably going to have this happen periodically because they, they don't have a whole staff of specialists. So when you have a patient that comes in that looks like a routine surgery that Typically, a routine surgery of that sort, they could handle. Right. But they say, well, there's other medical conditions that are with this patient, and we just don't feel quite comfortable uh, performing that without another specialist on site right. to make sure that something doesn't go bad. That's exactly that what happened here, right? right. I'm guessing that that's what happened. Yeah. And didn't, didn't have parties up there, shoot the great bend in the division. Well, but, but the insurance won't cover it? No, because what, what's right. What Medi I think what Medicare says is, <laughs> Medicare says they don't understand rural America, <laughs> quite frankly. They don't understand rural America. They don't understand that that happens every once in a while. They say, I'm sure in, in their mind's eye, they say, well, you should figure that out before you transfer the patient, and then you wouldn't have had that, that, that ambulance transport. And so it was unnecessary, so we're not paying it. Right. So I don't think she should be responsible for it. That's my feeling on but ultimately, that's up to the hospital. As far as our billings, I mean. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, as, as far as our billing, it's 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 kind of up to you guys. I mean, if if you entirely up to you. I mean, it, it's unfortunate that that she got a bill um, for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, but it happens. So that that's that. Um, do we have a social media policy? I I would actually this is a draft that I can up. I, in, instead of waiting until we have an issue, um, at least I mean I went on. That's just my my own wishes. That we, we have a lot of um, we have a lot of people. We have a lot of on emergency service volunteers too, and I just want to get a, a handle on it before we would have something. Um, some minor issues that 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 I, I have, and you know, I mean, as far as posting things, and um, so we don't have that problem. Uh, I, I plan on heading it off at the past, and so we don't post something that would be inappropriate, whether it be a picture, uh, a story, or um, um, I, I think we're teetering there, and and I and I see a. A need to, to go ahead and have something in place before we before we get into uh, maybe making a mistake that we could have avoided. So I'm also going to ask for it. I'm just asking for them if, if if they want to post something that has reference to us that they okay with me first. I agree. I think it should be. Even awesome. by Joe. No. I mean, I, I'm just thinking that he's a whole county. I agree. It should be standard yeah. policy. And why do we I do think sure. Because sure. yeah. that's one thing I'm thinking is that maybe there's a few more votes that you, you know, lawyer talk. I'll get, 
It, yeah, it gets a little bit. I did a little research, so I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get it too tight in, in reference to you know people's rights and stuff because they do have rights to to say and do certain things as long as they don't make. But but we have we have rights to our logos. We have rights to um, our you know when they're working for us. We have rights too of what they do, and so I, I'm not looking at putting something tight, you know, as in regards to how you use it. I'm just saying that let's. Uh, well, I agree because if, if someone puts something on there and it's derogatory, you know, the county could be liable. Well, and it just gets people stirred up sometimes, and what one person thinks is just hunky-dory is not so yeah. hunky-dory for um, half the population. So half the population thinks it's great, half thinks it's not so great, and so it's better just to, I think, uh, stay conservative if, if it's a direct reference to us. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put it on hold. Um, and, and a little bit, kind of that next point that I had was um, a thing to talk about was actually in reference to Joe. I just can't catch him on, you know, the few times that, you know, he's here. I, he's been in court and he's busy and by the time, um, by the time he's out of court, I've, I've missed him again. So I haven't been able to, to, to catch up with him on the, on the burn charges. I'd like to go ahead. Uh, I've actually sent out a couple of those and they came back and they paid. Uh, and, and the way I worded that wasn't... Uh, in any stern manner, I was just asking them to pay for the cost that we incurred. I wouldn't think that that would be, since I'm making a request, I'm not like, telling them they have to. Can I go ahead and process the other three that we have, and if Joe thinks it's, I guess, wrong, I guess we could send them back. It's, it's, it's starting to stretch out, is my, yeah, see. my problem. Or I can hold off until I catch him. Have you tried to call him on the phone, too? Well, I, I don't have his cell number. I just. You won't answer his cell phone. But I've I've, I've asked Cookie to have him call me. Uh, do you have a Ellsworth office number? I've called that one. Okay. Okay. He tends to respond to the county. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. On that on that subject, there's, there was a question that came up the other day about night burning. Um, so what we're saying is that after sundown, we're not... What we do is, is sometimes stubble. You know, it, it, it isn't near as volatile mm -hmm. as... as um, we, we've allowed that in the past here in Stafford County, like wheat stubble. But uh, other than that, um, it's, it's a state statute. It is a state statute. All right, so the question was, then how can they go over the Flint Hills and burn at night because the wind is down, you know, and the humidity's up? And That's grass you're putting here, though, just regular pressure. Yeah, but I'm. It's not very big. I don't know but, if they make. I just. I can do a little research, but I don't know why they why they have exception for them. I don't know. Well, it, the, the, to me, the, 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 the argument was valid because. The wind usually dies down in, in the evening, and the humidity goes up, and it's. Where the where the and, and I have to you know I I don't know because I didn't write the the statute, but I I have to think that it's a safety factor that if you do have to call firefighters out, that the risk probably of injury and, and death is probably yeah because probably they're unfamiliar probably. with the fields you know yeah yeah you have you're driving through the field and. And it's already like this, and then and then you hit a culvert, and bam, there goes a firefighter flying off the back, and mm -hmm. and uh, vehicle rolls. And well, I mean, it was a question. Yeah. And um, as far as stubble, stubble you know, we've allowed that. Like grassland yeah. and stuff like that. See where uh, it's it's stubble just daylight. rarely the stubble. I mean, it's flatland. It's it's yeah. it, it just doesn't. Um, we don't have the issues with it. Okay. Uh, the, the next thing I had was um, the, the fire alarm monitoring. I just wanted to share that uh, I, I did get uh, an estimate back, uh, and, and I know that we were going to get with Golden Belt, but I just wanted to share with you. I, I had checked with the fire alarm company to see if we could monitor ourselves. Uh, 
the system to do that was cost prohibitive. So, but what they did, uh, they went ahead and gave me a cost of, of uh, setting up a monitoring to where they monitored it. So I, I just thought I'd share with that with you so you had a, um, a comparable. And what they'll do is, is and, and I'll get you a copy of it, but for $13.99 a month, $13.99 a month is their monitoring fee. And they, but they do have a setup that I believe was around, and I gave that to Jason Bowling, and I believe that was a, a site setup, and that's around $390, but that includes the first year monitoring. And if I could have an executive session, uh, this is about non-elected personnel for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I make motion we go to executive session for 15 minutes for non-elected personnel. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Uh, we're going to executive session for 15 minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Executive session. Roll. Okay. Thing. Yeah. And we've got. That's the resolution on the indigent burials. Yes. Yeah. Um, approve that, right? Mm -hmm. I put $500, which is what most of the counties are doing. Joe recommended it. Okay. Yeah. And I make a motion we approve these tax rule corrections. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and second we uh, do the tax rule uh, corrections. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion will carry. Alright, I move that we accept resolution number 2011-R. A for uh, burials, indigent burials. That's the word I was trying to think. Okay. I second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and second. We adopt the resolution 2011 R 8 um, in regards to uh, indigent burial. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, now I would ask for a 10 minute executive session for discussing non elected personnel. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We'll go into a 10 minute executive session to discuss non elected personnel for 10 minutes. We're in executive session. Morning. My name is Carol Meyer, and um, I am here to talk to you today about the Rural Opportunity Zone legislation that the governor signed on April 11th. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it is part of his overall plan for prosperity and jobs. And it is very intentionally um, two parts. One is for uh, uh, directed at outsiders coming back to the community and involves a tax abatement and any rural opportunity zone, and you are one of the counties that's included in the rural opportunity right. zone, um, is eligible for that, and that depart the Department of Revenue basically handles that one. The second part of the plan is for student loan repayment, and counties are being asked to opt into a system where the state will pay that part of the loan and the county pays that part of the loan. And I don't know how much discussion you have had about this at all. Very um, little, I have. Did you? No. No. Um, I did. I'll bet the last week you did, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't know if they kind of. Yeah, yeah, the county has all the goodies they got. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, you must have went to some of the meetings. Yes, I did. I'll let all of them. You're a good man. Who thinks somebody is? Just a little alcohol. Yes, you are. Uh, I hope. No. Well, unfortunately, in the beginning, we, Stafford County, did not qualify. Right. And, and uh, I think Stafford County and a couple more counties it started out as yeah. 40. Just right on the, and, on the edge of the fall part of And there was, um, there was some discussion last week, okay, what if, and, and this wouldn't pertain to us because we're right smack dab in the middle of the state, but some of the border counties, you know, would say, well, what about, you know, if the student goes into Oklahoma or into Missouri or Nebraska or Colorado, you know, and um, that was, something they're going to look at. I guess there needs some more clarification on that. And, but overall, I, I think it's a good deal. I, my, my problem is, is how, how are we, 
Stafford County going to get someone from out of state to come and and work? For the student loan portion of it, they would have to be from out of state. Right, right. But I mean, but as far as, as the tax abatement. That will be interesting to watch because but, if that's yeah. truly why someone is moving back to a community, it's then it's not going to work probably anyway. Yeah. But but of the participants at the meeting last week, there were more excited about the school loans than they were yes. the tax abatement. You yeah. said the Topeka pay, uh, pay part of them then, part of the student loans that were here. Right. Uh, and what's, how, what's, the split, what's the mix on it? It's 50-50. 50-50. And a maximum loan that, that the state will look at is $15,000. Um, so your half of that would be 7500 over a five-year period of time. But you don't have to have a $15,000 loan. So it's 20% of any outstanding loan for someone who comes to you with an application. So if they only owe $5,000, mm -hmm. although I can't imagine that, then yours would be 20% of $5,000 over a five-year period of time. It's a pilot program for five years. I, so I, this is for kid, people that move into Stafford County? What about the kids that are in Stafford County? And then, if they're away at school yeah. and they come back, they're they eligible. Have, they have to come back to Stafford. And, well, or any other rural opportunity zone. There's 50 counties, mm -hmm. so any of those 50 they can come back to. However, it goes into effect July 1st of this year, but no one is eligible for it until you as a county opt in. So if a student comes back from school for the summer, they're not going to be eligible unless you have opted into the program. The resolution, and, and Topeka is working on um, a copy or a template for the resolution right mm -hmm. now, will identify the maximum amount that you want to spend. So you have some control over how much you spend. If you had 10 people who wanted to come back, that'd be pretty exciting. But how are you going to pay for 10 different roads? Now what do you mean yeah. we're going to pay for it? You have to pay for it. So if I, if I move here oh, from... Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, State. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? It's just one tool. It's just one tool. And it's not going to be enough to make anybody move back on its own. So, um, but, it, but it is an effort to get kids to move back or back to rural areas. There are some frequently asked questions. And because the rules and regulations... Okay. Do they have, uh, how long do they have to, if, if when you do this, what, what sort of commitment for staying here? Well, they don't get paid by you or by the state until until the end of 2012. So they would have been here for a full year by the time you make the first payment of 20% of the year. But then are they, is there, is there something that says they have to stay longer than that then? Well, yeah. They can, they can be gone then. Yeah. They can be gone. <clears throat> um, so that's one of the questions that people were asking about it. Um, And many of the counties are looking at options on how they fund what they're going to fund. And looking at foundations, looking at the Community Reinvestment Act funding that, that financial institutions um, have to do something with. Um, looking at taking donations, looking at the hospitals and the school districts, since most of the time those are the two most active recruiting and the most likely to come back with jobs. Because they can come back and not have a job and still be eligible according to the state regulations, and that's not what we want to see. Looking at these frequently asked questions, um, there isn't a contract. Uh, the payments are made directly to the lender, obviously not to the individual, so that you know, you know exactly where the money is going. Um, someone can move back to Stafford, um, but work in, or back to St. John and, and work in Frank if they wanted to drive back and forth. And that's, you know, you can't tell someone where they can live and where they can't live. You can't tell someone they have to have a job. Um, but it's where they live, where they reside that determines their they, eligibility. It's where they establish a domicile. And that can be determined in a lot of different ways. And I think legally the state's looking at well, what does that exactly mean? Does that mean you? have a driver's license where not everybody drives. Um, does that mean if you rent or buy? Most likely that's going to be the, the deciding factor. It's not a voter registration issue. 
So that's another one. Um, if if you have if the parents have taken out the loan, but there is no mention of a student on the loan, it doesn't qualify. The student has to be on the loan. Um, and like I said, the foundation idea makes so much sense um, because I think there are people who are interested mm -hmm. in supporting rural development, and this is one way to be able to do that, even if it's a pass-through fund and then building something as an endowment in the future. I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. Um, there are still some, some details that are being worked out, but, but, but what you need to know is that it is one tool. We're trying to get the information out before Memorial Weekend because class reunions start mm -hmm. then and run all through the summer. So we want you to be able to market this to whoever comes back for the summer. So the county pays a share and the state pays a share, is that? To the lending institution, yes, at the end of 2012. So you actually have this budget year and another <coughs> budget year in order to dedicate funding. But the resolution you pass will have to identify an amount of money. And amounts of money right. that we're willing to put into this group. Right. And where we get that money from, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we have no idea. It right. can be as creative as you want to be. <laughs> I know, I know. That's that's part of the challenge, I think, mm, yeah. of, of the whole rural development issue. There isn't any funding, so how do you participate in programs like this? And if you don't participate in programs like this, how do you bring people back? No. Well, it, it's a start. Really? One of the disturbing things, as I learned the other day, we have fewer and fewer more students in going into school of education. And I think there's in you know, ten years time. If this trend continues, uh, we're going to have teachers because everyone's going to the, you know, the corporate world, and so enrollment are down. From what I was told in. School of Education. So, um, and yet, there's unemployed teachers looking for jobs yeah, right now. Well, there so may be more unemployed yeah. teachers. Yeah. So maybe we just aren't going to need as many. We close all of our schools down. It's pretty sad too. Mm -hmm. So we're still working on the resolution. The, the time, the time frame. Of counties opt is when? Anytime after July 1st, but before January 1st. Of this year. Uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. January. Okay. And as I said, if someone is wanting to move back and you're not opted in, they're not going to qualify. And that's, I don't say that as a, or you better do it, I just say that as a protective thing. Absolutely. Um, because you wouldn't want that situation to happen to someone. And the total payment is a maximum of 15000 so the per county student. per student. So the county that participates in this can say, okay, we'll, we'll do seven thousand, right? We'll do ten thousand. So it's not you know, they will pay up to three thousand per year. Maximum. So that's twenty percent of the fifteen thousand maximum. Right? So First only twenty percent yes. So twenty percent a year of whatever the loan is. But, but, but we have to come up with a lump sum that we're willing to put into this Yes. Plan. yes. And, How do we and even I, arrive at a figure? Like well, that? the best guess is is going to be you know say we do two students and they're maxed they're thirty thousand, and so our portion of that would be fifteen thousand over five years. So you you hope then that they're not the maximum amount of students and that you could do more out of that. And then this is paid out county and state. End of each calendar year, and if the student decides they don't want to stay here after the first year, you're on the hook. The state's on the hook. If the state doesn't find its funding in future years, you're off the hook. They don't pay, you don't pay. 
there's some discussion about how they're going to allocate mm -hmm. funding and whether there's going to be so much per county, and then if the county doesn't use it by a certain time, they'll put it up for grabs. I don't know that that language has been finalized yet. So let me explain this again. We, 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 this is paid over a five-year period then, and our portion is paid over a five-year period too then. So we pay so much each year, and if it was 75, but so much each year to the student. Right. And if they left, that, that gives them a commitment to stay here then. If it's sure. five years in the house, you get their student loan paid off. Right. Who polices if they leave? Well, if they... If, if they file income tax, don't file income taxes, they... It's up to Department of Revenue and the Department yeah. of Commerce to track. So it's they not up to so you to track. We don't have to. Right, that's correct. They are going to want to know, though, what you've done, and especially if there have been any, any other programs that you've done to encourage the person to stay. You know, this is, as I said, one tiny piece of the overall program to get paid. <coughs> somebody in the income tax side of it, they have to come from out of state. Is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Either that, or they we, can't and have. If we don't made, fund the student loan part, but can we still participate in that? They're still eligible for that. It can be an in-state person, but they have to have been gone for five years and made less than ten thousand dollars a year over the last five years. So even if you had some farm income over the summer, but you established your residency someplace else for five years, then you could come back and be eligible for the sales tax. Yeah, but someone going to college, for example. Unless they, change their, unless they change their residency, they're going out of state, and they change all of their mailing addresses and all that kind of stuff, or the registration. Otherwise, you're just still part of this community off its yeah. Yeah. Okay. As more questions come out, um, and we update the frequently asked questions list, um, as often as we get good information, and you can find that frequently asked questions list on Kansas Commerce's site, um, kansascommerce.com forward slash ROZ, Rural Opportunity Zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be glad to come back and, and talk with you when the final resolution is out. And I'm also available for any questions you have. Well, so the state's not going to let us like tax CRP ground or anything like that, so we can fund a program like this. <laughs> oh, was that on tape? <laughs> <laughs> that funny? <laughs> no. I don't think a huge can of worms right there. Yeah, it is a can of worms, it but is. it's exactly what okay. needs to happen. Something like that. This isn't a bad idea. But where's the money going to come from? Well, why don't we have economic development here? We have thousands of acres of grass. And we get to support it with our fire departments and all that. And no revenue. The jobs, the farmers, the families. And the state says what we can do and what we can't do. Until they're willing to look at something like that and let us do what we need to do here, how, how can we actually do it? It's very frustrating. Take that message back to them. I please. promise you I will. I promise you I will. It'd be a great source of revenue for something like that. Absolutely. need something to run with. Okay, well, thank you. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you for your time. Appreciate I do appreciate it. Thank you. Carol, I was thinking thank you. of you in the Garden City. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we've met before a couple yeah. of different times. Nice this is yeah. totally off the subject. Okay. What, uh, was anything resolved about the railroad bridge out in Elkhart? Yes. Um, Did they... What burn up you mean? Yeah, the one that burned. There was supposed to have been yeah. some meeting last Wednesday or something. No. I talked to a couple of people who were at the meeting. I don't know if they have finally resolved it, but there were options that they were looking at. So I can't tell you yes or no, it's resolved. To, but yeah, that was tragic. They could move. I don't know. There was a short line railroad that, from where? From Dodge City to down through Elkhart, anyway. But they can move. I don't know how many thousands of bushels of wheat, only at 20 mile an hour, 
that it saves the infrastructure, you know, the highways and the whole business of trucking it out. And then that grassland fire is up got that bridge. And they can't afford to rebuild. Well, you're talking millions of dollars. And interestingly enough, they had formed an organization there yes. called We Can Do yeah, yeah, that yeah. was multiple counties, both in Oklahoma and in Kansas, to work with the railroad to fund what they were funding, you know, to upgrade the rail so that they could continue to use it and, and to actually get a railroad to pay for anything or even meet with you is amazing. And they got that yeah, part of it done and got the Department of Transportation over a long period of time to fund some of that. Okay. Thank you very much for Thanks your time. For I appreciate in. it. Are you going to be around for a little bit? Yeah, I'm headed to Pratt. Oh. So I'll stop back in. I'll be back. Okay. Why is Dr. Reed? I've got, yeah. Well, uh, the main excitement from our meeting last week was that the 911 bill was passed. And we're all thrilled about that. And you know, the thing I can't understand is that and I don't know whether it's the House or the Senate. One wanted to do 50 cents, and the other wanted to do 55 cents. And they haggled over this for I don't know how many days or weeks. And they finally decided on 53 cents. Uh, what's wrong with 52 and a half? You know? But the 911 charge is what we pay every month in our phone bill that comes back to fund the 911. System and, <coughs> and it was so that was a big fight. Then, the oh yeah. Recess, please. Set up. You got to let us know what time you got to call. Yeah, may not even. We may not be able to do it tomorrow. If you want to just send a letter, it's in system today. I'm just trying to be flexible here. Whatever you think. So. I will make a phone call and see if we can set that for some time. Tomorrow morning, or or any other morning. Any other morning. Okay. All right. Anything else? Let's just have to get it. We're adjourned.